Hello and welcome to the second in the series of videos surrounding ECL's join function. In this video, I'll demonstrate the use of transform structures and functions to efficiently process the results of a join. Let's start by reviewing uh, an example from the last video that joined a data set of people with a data set of places. Now, as you'll see, the result records of the join include all the fields of the left data set and all the fields of the right data set. But what if you don't need all those fields? That's where transform comes into play. If you're already familiar with the project function, you know that a transform structure or function can be used to change the layout of a data set. You can preserve fields you care about, throw away fields you don't care about, or even generate new fields by manipulating the values of other fields from the input data set. Using a transform within a join is much like that, but it also helps in writing efficient code by avoiding the creation of an intermediate data set with the full width of both keys. If you're only interested in a fraction of the combined data set widths, the savings can really add up when you're working with large data. So let's narrow this down a little bit. First, we need to define a record structure which is often called a layout. In this example, I want to preserve the name and address fields from the original data sets. The field types can be defined explicitly, as I've done with the name fields, or it can be uh, done implicitly by referring to a different layout, as I've done here with the address fields. Next, we need to define the transform itself. The first term specifies the output layout. And then in parentheses, we specify the layouts of the inputs. In this case, it's the left and the right data sets of the join. But if you only need the left side, you don't have to specify the right, and vice versa. In the body of the transform, we assign values to each of the fields in the output layout. Finally, we call the transform from within the join passing it records from the left and right data sets. And here you see the results. We've narrowed it down to just the fields we care about and no more. Well, that works pretty well, but let's see if we can simplify the results a little bit. The first change we'll make is within the body of the transform itself. Since we're not manipulating any of the fields, just copying them verbatim, ECL will do the work for us of figuring out which fields are needed based on the output layout. We don't have to create assignments for each individual field. However, we do have to declare that we'll be drawing from both the left and the right data set. And here we see that in the results, the code has behaved exactly the same as before. It was just a little bit easier to write. The second change that we'll make is to eliminate the transform altogether. And instead, we'll create a transform function within the join. This can be an elegant approach when the transform is extremely simple. However, uh, if you go beyond more than a couple simple assignments, it's a much better practice to use this transform structure that we uh, showed previously. And again, we see in the results that the behavior was exactly the same as before. So those are the basics of using a transform within a join to narrow the results down to only the subset actually required. For more information, please see the ECL language reference for additional examples. Thank you.